Hey creeps, it's Cameron again, and welcome back to my channel where I talk about books, movies, writing, and all things spooky. On this episode of Library Macabre, I have part two of my mini book haul. Getting right into it, I have a whole bunch more uh, vintage horror paperbacks, which I know is what you guys want to see. So first up we have Let There Be Dark, and this is by Alan Lee Harris. Uh, this book was published in 1994, and the tagline says, the shadow stealer is coming and its hunger runs deep. And actually, yeah, this one's very good. Uh, I've heard some great reviews about this one, and it is actually now uh, being reprinted by Capricorn Literary as part of their Resurrected Horrors line. Next we have Satan's Chance, which is by Alan Ross Schrader. And this one, let's see when this one was published. This guy was published by Ace in 1982, and I believe it's just another one of those uh, 80s satanic panic kind of books. Here we have uh, the Magion, Majun. I, I looked it up and I swear there's, I couldn't find anything about how to pronounce this. So we're gonna go with it. We're gonna go with uh, Magion. Now this is by Jeff Rovin and this was published by Charter in 1984. The next one is a zebra suspense novel, actually. It's not really uh, labeled as horror. That is Mirror Mirror. This is by Valerie Stevens. It's another one of those uh, suspense books that have a uh, yeah, landscape painted on them. And I, I always like these covers. They look kind of cozy. So I picked that one up. This next one is The Vow by P.T. Foster. And the tagline on this one says, Etched in flesh, signed in blood, consummated in flame. This was published by Leisure in 1989. This one was published by Fawcett Gold Medal in 1983. That is Possession. This is by Christopher Starks. Uh, his Brain, Her Body, A Deadly Combination. Uh, next up we have Fire Code by Chelsea Quinn Yarbo. This was published in 1987, published by uh, Popular Library. Kind of looks like a fire starter ripoff to me. Published by Signet in 1982. This is Judgment Day by Nick Sherman. And the uh, tagline on this says, Evil has a child's face in a novel of possession and blood curdling terror. I've actually heard some great things about Nick Sharman's books, so I need to check out some of his. Here we have a Ravenswood Gothic. This was published by Pocket in 1974. It is The White Ghost of Fenwick Hill. I, I really love these Gothic paperbacks. I don't find them too often, but when I do, I always try to pick them up. It's because the cover art's beautiful. Uh, the tagline on this one says, She braved danger and terror with help from beyond the grave. Next we have a leisure book that was published in 1994. And this is actually a uh, bind up of two of Leslie H. Witten's books. So we have The Fangs of Mourning and The Alchemist. I do have The Alchemist in the uh, zebra edition that has the skeleton holding the jack-o'-lantern, which is pretty cool. Um, but I've never owned a copy of Fangs of Mourning before. So got a pretty good deal on this one, it was only 250. Next is The Key to Midnight, which is by Lee Nichols, which is yet another pseudonym for Dean Koontz. That guy had a ton of different pseudonyms that he wrote under. Uh, this one is, I, I guess, a horror novel. I don't know, it kind of looks more like a suspense novel. Uh, but this one was published in 1979. It is a third printing. I usually only pick up first printings, but this one's in such nice condition that I just went ahead and went for it. Next is The Mesmerist by Felice Picano. I think that's right. Uh, this is 1977, published by Dell. Published in 1983 by Pocket Books, we have Ghost Fire. This is by Sharon B. Pape. And the tagline of this one says, For 300 years, the death house has been empty, waiting, burning. So it sounds like a haunted house story, from what I gather. And lastly, for the horror paperbacks, we have two books, which are by Michael Palmer. And I think he's mostly known for medical thrillers, but these ones have kind of a horror look to them more than anything. This is The Sisterhood, and I'm seeing some creepy nurses on the cover, so that's kind of what grabbed my eye. And then here is Side Effects, 
This one has a really cool inlay right there. For only $2, I found a first edition hardcover copy of The Ascending, which is by T.M. Wright. This is a tour book that was published in 1984. It is horror, even though it looks more like science fiction. Also for $2, I found a first edition hardcover of The Whisperer and Other Voices by Brian Lumley. And from Amazon, I ordered a copy of Sleep in the Dust of the Earth by Anthony Haynes. I've heard a couple of good things about this author, uh, but mostly this book came on my radar when I saw that uh, Keelan Patrick Burke did the cover which is a great cover, very, very spooky. Uh, this was really cheap on Amazon, so I went ahead and gave it an order. Also from Amazon, I ordered a copy of Toys in the Attic, a collection of evil playthings. This is an anthology of stories all centered around haunted toys. Uh, I saw this on Amazon a few months ago because I, I saw that uh, Chad Lutzky had a story in this, and I have been very curious to uh, give it an order. And then I saw that it had gone down to $4 on Amazon, with prime shipping and everything. It's a great deal. So I jumped right on that and ordered a copy. This is really cool. Uh, there's short stories in here, but there's also uh, original artwork and photographs. There's poetry in here, uh, all centered around uh, kind of haunted and creepy toys. I also pre-ordered the latest book from David Sodergren, and that is Night Shoot which is a slasher book about uh, a group of people who are shooting a slasher film. And of course, the slasher movie becomes real, well, like one of my favorite plots. Uh, I did receive a copy of his first book called The Forgotten Island, and I haven't read it yet. I still need to get to it, um, but it's slowly working its way up on my uh, review TBR. Uh, but I think I'm gonna read that and this back to back. I hear his books are so much fun. And then I also received my Flame Tree Press uh, pre-order of House of Skin by Jonathan Jans. I pre-ordered this with my Nightworms coupon, so I was able to get 50% off. It wound up only being like $10 with free shipping. Next, I got a couple of comic books. I bought a whole bunch of Sparkle slash Bloodscream comics. It's a, a local uh, comic book company. Uh, they were hosting a horror movie marathon at a theater in my town. I go to that like every other month, um, but they always have comics for sale. So I bought a couple to support them and um, they put out some really cool stuff. This one is called Cool Ghoul. I thought that one looked kind of cute. Uh, DK, which I read this one and it's about a, a zombie uh, Girl Scout. It was pretty fun. Uh, Blackjack, I thought that one looked cool. It takes place on Halloween. And then Unknown Creatures, this one's all about the Mothman. And then I have a couple of vintage uh, comic slash magazines. Uh, these were all published in the 90s, I believe. Uh, this is called Dread of Night, issue number one. I don't think this was continued. I think it only lasted for one issue, unfortunately. But it's uh, basically uh, an homage to the uh, Warren comics like uh, Creepy and Eerie. So that looks really cool. It's got some nice artwork inside. And then from the same company, here is Grave Tales issue number one and Grave Tales issue number two. And these are pretty much the same uh, kind of thing. We've got the uh, black and white artwork paying homage to eerie and creepy. And then lastly, I went to St. Francis Thrift Store and found quite a few books. These were all like 50 cents each, so I got some good deals. Uh, the first one here is a science fiction mass market paperback. It's called The Werewolf Principle. Found two books in the Fright Time series, which was kind of a Goosebumps ripoff back in the 90s. I bought a whole bunch of these as a kid. Uh, I actually already had a copy of this one, book number seven, but mine was in really bad shape. Uh, this one's like brand new, so I picked up a copy of that for like 50 cents. And then here's book number 11, which actually completes my Fright Time collection. And next we have Nightmare Mountain by Peg Carrot. This is a YA kind of a survival thriller. I just really liked the cover on that one. Uh, this one here is called You, Me, and Gracie Makes Three. This is by Dean Marnie. It was published by uh, Scholastic in 1989. It's a first printing in great shape. Um, I've actually heard great things about this book. I hear it's actually really uh, heartfelt and has a little bit more to offer than most of these kinds of books. I actually read about this in a Paperback Crush by Gabrielle Moss and uh, I didn't care for that book very much. I feel like the author was overly snarky and really hard on these books, uh, but she actually liked this one. So if she liked it, then it must be good. I also picked up a few Sweet Valley books. Uh, I've been 
collecting these just whenever I find them just because I think they look really uh, trashy and fun and I have actually uh, read one recently and it was complete lunacy and I loved it so I, I'm, I'm eager to read more of these uh, the first one we have here is called uh, Sweet Valley High a stranger in the house this is uh, considered one of the super thrillers and it's got the die cut cover there uh, there were actually quite a few Sweet Valley horror books and I've been trying to collect all of those so that looks cool here is Sweet Valley University book number seven goodbye to love and here we have one of the original Sweet Valley High books it was called crash landing I believe this is book 20 in the series uh, this is actually a hardcover uh, I think it was like a book club edition. Next we have book 123 of Nancy Drew. So this one is called The Clue on the Silver Screen. It's a first printing. Jenny Dean, Science Fiction Mysteries. This is book number four, and it is called The Secret of the Invisible City. Um, I don't come across these ones very often. This was actually like a 70s mystery series, but it looks pretty fun. And then lastly, we have Ghosts Beneath Our Feet, which is by Betty Wren Wright, one of my favorite authors when I was a kid. She writes a lot of really nice ghost stories. Um, and I don't think I ever read this one, but I found a nice hardcover edition of this one as well. And those are all of the books that I bought in May. And uh, so far, I'm halfway through June, and I've done really well. I've not bought very much in terms of books. I've actually bought a lot of movies this month. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Leader creeps.